Hey everybody, welcome to my unboxing video. I'm excited, uh, we just got this in just the other day. Uh, this is my second Bacall, uh, and this is the 2000 mega hash. I am running a 50, 150 mega hash, which I'll, I'll go ahead and show you that uh, when we get down to the garage, but I really anticipate very good results with this and, and about maybe about a three month return. I'm gonna show you the unboxing and we're gonna go through a setup process as well. Let's go have some fun. Box and set up a Bacall 2000. Uh, I've had this Bacal 150 since January, and it paid off itself in um, April, and it's doing anywhere between $40 to $80 a month, but now we got the granddaddy of them all, the A2000, so let's open it up. We'll be careful here, we just got it, came in from Hong Kong this week, and thanks for my daughter for uh, videotaping me. Some styrofoam, here she is. Is eight two thousand with an intake fan and two ASIC boards. And what we'll do is we'll bridge these two together, hook it up to an RJ forty five connection, and connect it to four PCI. Now you could use an amp miner, you could use an HP or Intel server board with a knockout board. I just happen to have this laying around. Got this for like twenty four dollars on sale. Okay, so for this for my test bench, I'm going to use this five hundred watt. Uh, power supply. I really recommend you going with something more enterprise grade. This is a DPS 1200 HP power supply. I'm going to use this uh, when I get my second A2000 installed. and I'll run these in series. Also be careful when you, if you're going to do a power supply like this, you can do that. First of all, I would recommend you do get a professional termination plug, but make sure you only use one PCIe per run okay no more than two because what's going to happen is if you put too much load on this these will burn these will burn trust me these connections can burn out and cause fire so you got to be very careful here it does come with a two wide splitter so i'll show you that hookup but if you can just do one per that'd be perfect now you also get this right here it's a parallel cable and this allows us to connect both of the asics together what we're going to do is separate those apart so now I just have one if you take a look at the units right here you have a controller it's a or it's, a, it's actually a orange Pi controller that's plugged into one of the ASICs each one of these makes up one giga hash so combining the two is a good uh, a 2000 2000 mega hash or two giga hash okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bridge these together now it's really easy you can see right here on the bottom, it says out. So we go from the controller to out to the end to the next one. And if we get another controller or another A2000, we go out from the second controller to the third, fourth, and so forth. So let's bridge that together. We're going to go ahead and do the out right there. And then as you can see here, it says in right there. I know you probably can't see it too well, but it is labeled. There you go. That's it. Okay. Well, not totally. We got to put power and Ethernet. So we got an Ethernet RJ45. Boom. There we go. Then connect our PCI, which is going to clip on the outside, like that, like that. Right. So when you fire this up, there we go. Got this connected to a watt meter. Right now on standby, it's 38 watts right here. It's initializing. You could tell by the blue lights right here. The red light is this power on. The blue light's initialization. And when it's processing, you'll see it blink green. So if it's blinking green, it's actually actively hashing. Blue means it's connected. So it's still not initialized. So it's very quiet. It makes it a great great unit for home use doesn't generate a lot of heat a lot nicer than having a bit main product in your garage and that's where we're at right now uh, maybe about a half minute it's starting to spin up now you hear it okay as you can see the blue lights means established connection and it is hashing currently on that and on this so if you don't have two blue lights like that that means something's wrong with one of the blades all right, let's go actually set up the Balkai web interface and get it pointing to our pools. 
Okay, now that we have it set up, let's make sure that we can talk to it. So we just do a ping, B-A-I-K-A-L, or Bacall. That's the default host name that it has. Okay, we got IP ready to go. And we can put that IP in there, or we can just type in the Bacall. I already have it here set up. I already had it auto. The default password is Bacall, all lowercase, go. Okay, so now that we're logged in, the first thing that you'll notice on the dashboard is that it's at two giga hash. If only one ASIC is running, you'll see one giga hash and one ASIC running. So we've got the two and we are really, really in good shape. And they're running super cool. That is awesome. But as you can see, the current active mining connection is default from somebody and I think this was a used unit to tell you the truth so we're gonna clear all that out so if you don't if you have all this um, configured go ahead and, and clear this out so let's do that right now okay so we're gonna configure the nat um, Z pool Z pool is a uh, pool that does automatic algorithm switching between X11 and 13 14 15 cubic and quark which is fantastic so I'm gonna have that configured right in there ready to go next go ahead and open up a new tab and go to zpool so this is actually my current x 150 mega hash it's been offline for two weeks because i am mining arctic okay so now that we're in let's go in to our miner you can see that by default there are some things in here i think this was being used we're currently actively mining against angel.1 already pre-configured there for us i'm going to bring up trim wallet we'll just do a new address and we'll just say call a 200 or 2000-1 okay and what we do here is just make sure the one two three four five and six perfect perfect and we'll go ahead and delete that paste in our bitcoin addresses and this looks all good there. It's hard to see, but as long as it's a long string with each algorithm, you're good. In here, look at there. So those are all my Bitcoins, or <laughs> Bitcoin addresses. And currently it's connected through X11. And if I go to Zpool, go to wallet, go down, hit address, paste, hit submit. And that might not come up right away. Depends on how many shares it's actually submitted. But look at there. So far, it's actually mined Quark and X11. Very cool stuff. And we can see that our collection is about 1.9, roughly. Uh, 1.95. So this is super, super. Uh, this is, I'm loving it. And you can see the strings that it was using through SG Miner, which is the built in miner that is on the Orange Pi. So we're mining. We are in full swing operation. Look at there. Perfect. So let's go and do a backup miner configuration. Because what happens if Zpool goes down? Then you're not mining. What I do for my secondary, and I don't use it very often because uh, Zpool is very good, is I use the mining pool hub. So mining pool hub, you got to create an account. You can't just throw the Bitcoin address, unlike the other guy. So we're going to go ahead and specify that, no problem. Then I have to log in, and if you don't have an account already with them, then you will create, go through the, the creating process. And there we go. And, okay, then go to sign up. Okay, so I got that all ready to go. Let's go register now after we did the sign up. All right, so go ahead and log in. So now we'll go ahead and log in, and there we go. Okay, so first of all, let's go to Auto auto Exchange. Currently, it's not set to exchange your altcoins to any other coins. So what I do is I set it to Bitcoin. I want to get paid in that, so I'll just set, set Auto Exchange. Okay, next we hit on Hub Workers. Okay, and then we're going to put our worker name on there, and we'll call this A2000-1. And we'll just do a password of X. And it's going to take your username dot. Okay, so then there we go. Okay, then after a while, what's going to happen is that you will we'll start getting balances. Once you get a balance of a certain coin, then you can actually add a, a wallet address by just clicking on this. So if you click on manage wallet, then you can put your payment address, what the overall threshold would be, and also put your PIN in that you use during the setup. Okay, that's all you got to do.
So actually, you won't get this far until you start mining to it. <laughs> so it's showing you a little bit ahead of time because you might be like, how does it know where to pay me? And that's how it would do that. So let's go back to our miner. And then here, we're going to do my username. There we go. And remember, we did X as the password. There we go. This is down. Um, also, you could do a backup. So if you just hit backup itself, it creates one of these files. And then you just export the backup file to a zip. And that's right there, your zip file. I just save that, and you're good to go. Overall, right now it's doing really well, slightly over 2 giga hash, which I'm pretty, pretty happy with. And it's going to be flipping around all these different pools. And that's really a good place to be. Yeah, so that's a configuration overall. I hope that was helpful. I, I know that the, not having instructions is pretty painful, and I really love these guys, and I'm going to have these supplement my bit main miners uh, with Gigawatt. Perfect um, device for home use, by the way, as, as I mentioned in the garage. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day. And, and uh, if you haven't, uh, please subscribe and like the video. Bye.